at the state capitol today with Mark Bays, uh, Urban Forestry Director for the Oklahoma Forestry Services. Mark, it's great to have you back on Oklahoma Gardening. It's nice to be out under the shade of the beautiful oak trees on the capitol grounds. They are wonderful. Well, today we're going to talk a bit about these trees that live in this urban type setting and what kinds of challenges they face. What are some of these unique things that urban trees have to deal with? Yeah, if we, if we look at the forest, uh, mm -hmm. you know, trees are happy, just doing well out there. But if you look at trees in urban areas, I mean, it's just like everything's working against them. Mm -hmm. You have, uh, it might not be the soil, uh, compaction going on, mm -hmm. limited root space. Uh, you have the pollution, the runoff from cars and everything. It's just, you know, the, the temperature uh, difference that we have in our cities and towns. It's just, yeah. things are just stacked up against trees in urban areas. Absolutely, you know, if we look statewide, we have enough challenges already. We have a great range of climate it, zones. It, we have these temperature extremes, but then when right. you get in the city, it seems those factors are compounded. Yeah, and that's the thing, if you think about here in Oklahoma City, we're in zone seven. Mm -hmm. And if you look on a zone map where that goes, it goes all the way out to the east coast. Well, yeah. I can promise you in the same week, they did not have minus four and 80 degrees within one week, which is what we had here in, in central Oklahoma this last mm -hmm. winter. So it's really challenging uh, for the trees and really all plant material in Oklahoma. Absolutely, and we've seen some of, uh, some of our plants suffering from that this year. We have. Well, when we look at trees this season, we're gonna look at some different issues um, with street planting and different ways we can manage trees in the urban setting. And today I wanna to focus on tree growth. Um, we don't always have as much room to grow trees in the urban area. And of course we can limit size through pruning, but there's also another method with there, There's chemical. a lot of different ways mm -hmm. to, to help keep trees in check with the environment. A mm -hmm. lot of times large trees are planted close to buildings. Right. And uh, so you don't want them growing into their buildings. Uh, mm -hmm. Sometimes they're planted in uh, close to sidewalks. And so, uh, you know, you don't necessarily want to have large trees close to sidewalks and things like that. And right. so root pruning and, and pruning the tree is, is one way to help control some of that. But another way is through the use of chemicals that you can actually control the, the growth of a tree. But then we're also finding some added benefits from controlling the, the growth of tree. Well, many of our viewers uh, might be familiar with the use of plant growth regulators in herbaceous crops. Um, when we visited uh, the poinsettias growing at Christmas time, they used those to keep the size nice and compact. Kind of a similar right. application for trees as well. Right. Uh, you can use tree growth regulators and, mm -hmm. and they've been around since the 50s. The mm -hmm. utility companies, uh, you know, large trees around utility companies, they've been using them to help control the size of large trees in that area. Um, in construction areas, mm -hmm. um, you know, they've used them as well. But uh, what's really kind of interesting is to see some of the added benefits that we're seeing with some of the tree growth regulators beyond mm -hmm. just limiting the size of the tree. Okay. And what are some of those benefits that we're seeing? Well, there's mm -hmm. some added health benefits. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, the roots that we're finding, because uh -huh. all the photosynthesis still goes on in the leaves and you still have all of that food production, uh -huh. uh, you can actually have more roots uh, growing uh, yeah. as a result of that. So rather than all that food energy going towards stem elongation and more mm -hmm. leaves and more branches and uh, thicker things like mm -hmm. that, well, they actually get more roots developed. So that's why it's a really uh, added benefit to maybe consider growth regulators mm -hmm. in a site where trees may have had some construction damage. Mm -hmm. Or where they're in a, maybe in a street planting where they don't have a lot of soil, yep. they can grow some more roots to take out nutrients and water from what's available. Or trees that mm -hmm. were, have been like planted too closely to buildings and things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't have to go in and prune them as often. You can apply mm -hmm. growth regulators so they don't grow into the buildings and mm -hmm. things like that. So anytime you have a tree that may be outgrowing the place, I mean, I know we're all doing a lot better job yeah. planting that. And, the um, right tree. The right tree, the right, right place. <laughs> but every now and then that yeah. just might not happen. That's so uh, it's just another tool that we can use to uh, keep those trees healthy, healthy and happy uh, where they're at. Very good. We looked at another use uh, indoors with interior right. scapes. You have some beautiful ficus growing yeah. in the... In the Department of mm -hmm. Agriculture building. Uh, our building was put in in the 80s mm -hmm. and they, it's, it's just this really this wonderful canopy of ficus trees that mm -hmm. we have in our main entryway. But they're, they've almost outgrown their containers that they're mm -hmm. grown in. And uh, 
you know, they go all the way up almost to the third floor. Yeah. And so we've seen some of them actually start shifting in their planting pot mm -hmm. that they're essentially planted in. So, so we're going to be applying some of these growth regulators to keep that more in check. Mm -hmm. Hopefully we'll get some more uh, roots developed and the trees will become a little bit healthier in that limited area that they're planted in. Excellent. Now we also are working today, going to look at a tree here by the Capitol. This is a very special tree on mm -hmm. the grounds of the Capitol. It's, uh, we call it the George Washington Elm. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, uh, they've done a lot of construction over on the south side of the Capitol. And, and, recent years and uh, it's, it's sustained a little bit of root damage so we're going to be applying this tree growth regulator to maybe try and improve some of the health uh, of the tree. Okay and you're working with a company and yes, you donated there, their... There's a, 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 mm -hmm. a wonderful company uh, out, out of Tulsa came over, Edco came out and they do, they're donating all the materials today mm -hmm. and uh, it's just it's, it's good to have them out here. Okay well I'm going to go visit with uh, Mike from Edco and see how that's done. All right. visited this American elm in the past looking at how its roots were protected during the construction phase by elevating the pavers above the root zone. Today the next phase of that protection for this plant is going to use the plant growth regulators to stimulate root growth and joining me is Mike Wellner to show us how this is done. Hi. Welcome. <laughs> um, well to begin with whenever we're getting ready to do our plant, reg plant growth regulator mm -hmm. uh, there's couple of things you've got to know, the species and the diameter of the tree. Okay. So we know this is an American elm, Right. so the next thing we need to know is the diameter. The diameter. And so and what we're going to do is measure mm -hmm. at, at four and a half feet tall, which is called DBH, mm -hmm. and we're going to measure it around. And we're measuring the diameter. And the diameter mm -hmm. is 49 inches. Okay. So we know it's that it's a big tree. A, it's pretty big. <laughs> That's why I needed your help. Um, so we know that it's an elm mm -hmm. and it's 49 inches in diameter. Okay. And so we look at the rate chart uh, that's on the label for the product mm -hmm. that we're using, Canvastat. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, categories of different trees, and this is in the C category. Okay, and the and category just tells you how much tells to Tells you how much of the, the product, product to apply, because some trees are more mm -hmm. sensitive than others. Okay. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> we want to make sure we get the right amount in for the right tree. Uh -huh. We also look at the condition of the tree and whether we need to put 100% in or 75% or 50%. So for this tree, we're going to do about a 75% rate. Okay. So we look on the label, we get all that, and we are going to be doing it with an injection. Okay. And so there's a couple of methods you could use, but the one we're going to use is an injection into the ground. Mm -hmm. We're going to put about uh, 24 holes around the tree, okay. and we're going to put about 190 milliliters of product in each hole. Excellent. And after this uh, product applied, tell me about how it's going to take form in the tree and what we might expect to see in the near future. Well, what will mm -hmm. happen mm -hmm. is uh, it, we put it down near the base of the tree so mm -hmm. it can uptake it very, very readily. And as the tree transpires, it will start to kind of pull that product up into the tree and out to the leaves. Mm -hmm. uh, what it typically will do will help the leaves look a little bit greener mm -hmm. so they look a little healthier. It'll help also with uh, some maybe drought conditions that sometimes we experience that in Oklahoma. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. <laughs> and so it can help with, with that. Mm -hmm. uh, and then when the tree is pruned, uh, because we're not really doing a full rate, it'll still get some growth mm -hmm. back at a semi-normal rate. So if it, if it is having to be pruned at any time. Okay. And one of the major things we're going to be looking for is this stimulated root growth. And it's those <clears throat> fine fibrous roots. Right, the fine fibrous roots that will help with nutrient and water mm -hmm. take up. Uh, and they just help the tree actually have better health. Okay, well thank you so much. I did want to point out before we leave that of course this is something that a certified pesticide applicator needs to apply. Right, this isn't mm -hmm. a product you can go buy at Home Depot or Lowe's. <laughs> right. So you have to be licensed to buy it mm -hmm. and it needs to be a, a certified applicator applying mm -hmm. it so it's done properly. But if there's a use in the home landscape, we could hire an arborist to do the job. Correct, you could do that. Okay, well thank you so much, Mike. All right, well thanks for letting us uh, help out with this project. Mm -hmm.